Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another in the core concepts for med surge nursing series. And at this point, I think we probably have close to 10 core concepts videos. I will link all of them in the description box below if you are looking for other core concepts to review. Now, as a reminder, the core concept series is a back to the basic series where we are really just trying to understand what is going on inside the body so that we can better assess diagnose and care for clients with acute and chronic conditions. Now, do remember that every core concepts video has an associated case study or study guide available in my Etsy shop. And I will put a link to that Etsy shop in the description box below. However, for this video, I am offering a free study guide and it is all about medications that affect coagulation. And in addition to talking about those medications, nursing implications, their mechanisms of action, and what they're indicated for, I'm also discussing the laboratory values that go along with each of those medications, and as well as any antidotes that go along with those medications. So if you're interested in getting a copy of that free study guide, please do email me, and I will provide you with a copy of my email at the end of this presentation presentation, as well as you can find it linked in the description box below. Okay, so today we are going to talk about clotting. So clotting is by definition a complex multi-step process by which our blood forms this protein-based structure that's called a clot, and it forms in an appropriate area of tissue injury, and it is uh, formed in order to prevent excessive bleeding. However, that clotting process is not preventing whole body perfusion, and that's really important. So of course, platelets are or thrombocytes play a major role in the clotting process. So when injury occurs, those platelets become very sticky and they aggregate or clump together to form the plug or the clot. So sometimes you'll hear uh, platelets called that process called platelet aggregation. So that just means they're clumping together. Now platelet aggregation does trigger a clotting cascade, which causes our clotting factors, which are um, produced by our liver to work together together and form that fibrin clot and also localize blood coagulation. Now, if we're unable to form clots inside of our body, that can result in life-threatening blood loss. If we have too many platelets or excessive stickiness to our platelets, that's another problem. That's called hypercoagulability, and um, that will impair our blood flow. So if we have a decreased ability to clot or an increased ability to clot, we're going to have problems inside the body. Now, the interrelated concepts for clotting are going to be mobility, and of course, perfusion. Uh, perfusion we have already discussed in this series and mobility will be coming soon. Okay, so this slide should look familiar. We've looked at a very similar slide in numerous other core concepts videos, but this is the scope of clotting. So of course, straight in the middle of our scope, we do have normal clotting, which is what we want for our clients. However, we can have decreased clotting, which can lead to that life-threatening blood loss or hypovolemic shock. And then we, on the our side, we have hypercoagulability, which impairs our body's ability uh, for perfusion or for blood to flow through our body if we have an excessive uh, amount of clotting that's happening. Now, when we think about risk factors, we have risk factors for increased clotting and risk factors for decreased clotting. So for increased clotting, of course, immobility or prolonged uh, or uh, decreased uh, mobility is going to cause us to have possibly a problem with increased clotting. Polycythemia is where we have too many red blood cells, which makes our blood thicker and does predispose us to developing clots. Smoking decreases platelet aggregation. Uh, diabetes mellitus impairs blood flow. And when we have impaired blood flow, we might have increased clotting. And then of course, atrial fibrillation. Decreased clotting risk factors are going to be thrombocytopenia, so we don't have enough platelets. So any meds or diseases that cause bone marrow suppression, so there are some uh, chemotherapeutic drugs, um, also uh, radiation or chemotherapy, um, any treatments like for leukemia, those are going to suppress our bone marrow and therefore we won't produce as many platelets. 
Um, liver cirrhosis, so remember those clotting factors are produced in our liver. So anytime our liver is dysfunctional, we do have decreased clotting factors. And then of course we might have a genetic condition such as hemophilia. Now, hemophilia is an X-linked recessive genetic disorder. And if you're interested in hearing more about genetic disorders, I do have a video on my channel, channel all on uh, genetics. And I talk about hemophilia in particular, and you can learn more about that by watching that genetics video. I will link it in the description box below. Um, the physiologic consequences of clotting, now some of which we've already talked about, let's start with increased clotting. So for increased clotting, we can end up with venous thrombosis. They can either be superficial blood clots or deep vein thrombosis. And of course, the problem with either superficial or deep vein thrombosis is they can dislodge and end up in our brain causing a stroke or end up in our lungs. That's known as the pulmonary embolism. Both of those can um, certainly be life-threatening. Now for decreased clotting, that's that prolonged bleeding, increased blood loss, decreased perfusion, um, all of which is going to lead to hypovolemic shock. And we do know that the end result of hypovolemic shock, if untreated, is death. So very, very life-threatening. Now from an assessment standpoint, increased clotting, we're going to look for signs and symptoms of venous thrombosis. And so those uh, signs and symptoms are going to be localized pain, swelling, redness, and warmth. We tend to see that in our lower extremities. So you're watching for that lower extremity or that calf, that swelling, it's red, it's warm, maybe you're doing um, calf circumference measurements, um, the patient is having pain with movement of the ankle or with walking, all of those, uh, especially if it's unilateral, could be signs of a uh, superficial or deep vein thrombosis. Now for decreased clotting, we're going to see purpuric lesions. So those are hemor hemorrhagic lesions. Um, so that might be ecchymosis, so bruising or petechia. We might also have blood in our urine, that's hematuria, or occult blood in the stool or frank bleeding from the stool. We can also have frank bleeding from the gums or the nose. All of those would be signs that we're having um, a decreased ability to clot. Now, I did mention in the free study guide, you can learn all about the different uh, laboratory tests that we do related to uh, clotting, and you can learn which medications we do those specific laboratory tests for. So that's a really fundamental, important part of your nursing journey. Um, so for the, uh, the laboratory testing that we do in particular is going to be a prothrombin time, that's your PT an activated partial thromboplastin time, that's the APTT, and then of course our INR known as the international normalized ratio. Three very important laboratory tests to assess clotting. Okay, we always have to talk about health promotion. So of course for increased clotting, um, if you have uh, risk factors for increased clotting, we do want those clients to drink adequate fluids to prevent dehydration. When the body becomes dehydrated, so think fluid volume deficit, our blood does get thicker and that does predispose us to clotting. We also wanna avoid crossing the legs, uh, prolonged sitting, and we want to ambulate frequently. Remember our best preventative measure against blood clots, especially in a post-surgical client, are going to be um, early and frequent ambulation. Explore smoking cessation, and of course, monitor and report any symptoms of thrombosis. Now for decreased clotting, we want to have those clients really be careful with their activities of daily living, that they're not doing um, anything that could accidentally cause an injury. And then of course, because we can't prevent every injury, we do want those clients monitoring for unusual bleeding or bruising and reporting any of that immediately. As far as interventions for increased clotting, those are going to be the anticoagulant or antiplatelet medications. Again, I do have that free study guide available. All you have to do is send me an email and I'll be happy to send you a copy of that free study guide. Um, remember that many of these medications do require frequent blood monitoring to ensure a therapeutic range. And so we wanna make sure that patients understand that. Also, anytime that a patient is on an anticoagulant or an antiplatelet medication, now they are going to have a decreased ability to clot, right? Because we're thinning out their blood. These medications are often called blood thinners. So now we want to make sure that they are monitoring for and reporting that unusual bleeding or bruising. 
Now, interventions for decreased clotting, again, are just going to be to monitor and report any in signs of increased bleeding. Okay, guys, hopefully that was helpful for you to learn more about the core concept of clotting. Please do leave me a comment down below or contact me via email. You can also follow me and contact me on my Twitter account. I am posting over there daily, lots of helpful strategies, practice test questions, additional resources that might help you along your nursing student journey. And then again, if you are interested in that free um, anticoagulant antiplatelet medication study guide, please do send me an email at the email address on the screen and I will be happy to send it over to you. And then once again, all of the videos in the core concept series will be linked in the description box below, as well as a link to my Etsy shop where you can find other case studies and study guides to go along with every core concept video. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.